demo session of thought. So what we're going to see today, let me share my screen. Um, basically, we see uh, what has been uh, added to JupyterLab requirements. Uh, there are many fixes that has been introduced, uh, some new feature for the user to select a path where to store overlays, which is important for uh, AI pipelines. There are some more notification which are provided in case of uh, some errors. And uh, this is uh, basically uh, shown in all these issues. Uh, let's go through some of them one by one. Um, the first one was related to uh, detecting packages. So JupyterLab requirements requires uh, um, rely on uh, Invectio library, uh, which is provided uh, by Tot. It was created by Frido. And this library uh, allows you to detect basically from imports uh, what packages uh, you're using in your notebook. So if you also have uh, imports but you're not using them, then this uh, library is going to detect only the one that you are actually using. It's still not uh, perfect, but uh, uh, we're going to improve it in the future. But uh, basically, there was uh, an issue uh, not on the Invecto side, but uh, it turns now to be turn, turns out uh, turns out to be some error from uh, um, the uh, parser that actually uh, give the inputs to Invecto. And this was solved. So this, uh, this was uh, some uh, issue happening for some uh, notebooks that now should not appear anymore. Uh, another issue was related to the UI. Um, so some users were trying to use or detect packages, which was working correctly. But uh, later, basically, they were uh, not able to uh, modify some of the packages that were detected, or the UI was basically losing track of some of them, which was a huge bug that uh, was solved now. So now we are, you're able to detect and modify everything you want from the packages. Another big change was related to the API. Um, this was related to uh, some of the long running processes that we have inside the JupyterLab requirement extension, mainly for locking the dependencies and installing them. So sometimes this leads to issue and the async process basically uh, break the front end. So we wanted to make it more reliable and robust. So we introduced a new class, uh, which is basically considering tasks. So when we schedule a task, <clears throat> this will be uh, added to the API. So there will be a new task added to the queue, and this will basically start uh, the process in the background. And on the front end side, we have also an handler that uh, do polling um, and checks when this basically uh, process is finished, and then retrieve the results from the from the task, which has an ID and can be seen from the API. Uh, this is also something that we wanted to improve and to provide basically a way for the user to see what are the endpoints that are provided and how you can see them. Uh, we introduce here uh, the UI. Basically, you see that we have endpoints for the resolution engines, TOT and PPENV. We have different action for the kernel. So if you want to install, get the results, um, check what are the packages installed, and also modify the file, so if it's the pip file or uh, the .yaml file, and also basically the new endpoints for the task. So you, we can create uh, the task, get the results, and delete them. And these are the new changes. And we also added a new feature, which was requested. So basically, um, sometimes this was happening not locally, but on the, on the, on the cloud from the Jupyter Hub. Owner, uh, sometimes the extension was not able to uh, find out which is the source, the source of the repo, and this was basically creating issues when uh, the overlays uh, should be created uh, automatically. So in order to solve that, we, uh, which is something that was not happening locally, we decided to give the possibility to the user to uh, create a path to the root project so they can basically decide. Uh, um, where to place these overlays. So if you have repos or 
many Git repos in the same uh, uh, project. Basically, now you can uh, select and decide to, where to place these overlays. And we can see maybe an example. Um, this is a project from the uh, uh, AIOps team in the ICOE. And uh, I took some of the notebooks just for the test. And first of all, we try to identify the packages which are uh, present. As you can see, we can choose the name of the kernel name as always. Uh, we can decide where to place it. This is the Opet first uh, stage environment. So here we are testing that everything is working correctly. The path where this overlay should be created could be uh, basically added. Let's say that I want it in the uh, main root directory, but I could go also even inside the other uh, repository. Uh, for the sake of the test, let's reduce the timeout and let's go. This would also simulate eventually, this is uh, expected because I put a low uh, timeout, but just I wanted to show that sometimes there could be issues that uh, comes from the gateway errors, which uh, we're not able to handle and uh, seems to happen uh, randomly at the moment. So we need to dig more into it, but at least we provide more notification and uh, to the user now. So if that happens, which is not always the case, uh, then basically the system is able to tell the user that there was a get error exactly as it happened. So you can either open an issue or uh, just try again. And in that case, you will see that uh, this problem might uh, not uh, uh, arise basically. And yeah, well, basically now it's reloading the packages. You see that now we have also notification that we added. There was a gateway error and this was canceled. Basically the process was canceled, the one that we showed before. So what you can do is basically <clears throat> try again. This will take some time, but uh, after that, we should be able to see um, the result um, and the new basically um, kernel created. Uh, what else? We have uh, many new features and uh, things that we need to address, especially to make it uh, better and more robust, uh, uh, adding more tests and making sure that uh, these issues do not arise. We also open uh, some uh, issue upstream in order to solve this uh, gateway error uh, that is happening. But uh, beside this, uh, this is all the updates that I wanted to give you related to this uh, uh, extension. And if you want to contribute, we're always happy to receive uh, issues or uh, if you want to contribute to any other things that uh, we want to plan for this extension. And if you have uh, other feature requests, please uh, let us know. We are always happy to receive these issues. And otherwise, uh, thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye.